So let's take a look at a common reaction that deals with sugar molecules known as mutarotation. And as an example, let's focus on the glucose molecule. More specifically, let's focus on D-glucopyranose. So both alpha and beta versions of D-glucopyranose differ from one another with respect to their ability to rotate plane polarized light. So alpha D-glucopyranose is capable of rotating plane polarized light with a degree measure of 112 degrees in the positive clockwise direction while the beta anomer, our beta D-glucopyranose, rotates light also in the clockwise positive direction but it rotates it only 18.7 degrees. Now what exactly will take place if we take either one of our anomers, either the alpha or the beta anomer, and place it into an aqueous solution? So let's suppose we take the alpha anomer, we place it inside our aqueous solution, and we shine light onto our mixture. We shine plain polarized light. What exactly will happen to our light? And the same exact thing can be asked for our beta anomer. If the beta anomer is placed into our aqueous solution, how exactly will it rotate plane polarized light? So we might expect that if only the alpha anomer is initially placed into our aqueous solution, because alpha rotates it positive 112 degrees, we might expect that the plane polarized light that we shine on that aqueous mixture will be rotated exactly this degree measure. And likewise, if instead we initially place the beta anomer of D-glucopyranose into our aqueous solution, we might expect that the plain polarized light we shine on that mixture will be rotated positive 18.7 degrees. Now, this isn't actually what we observe experimentally. What we actually observe is that the rotation of the plane polarized light gradually changes until a certain degree measure is reached. For the case of D-glucopyranose, it's 52.7 degrees in the positive clockwise direction. For other sugar molecules, this degree measure is different. And this phenomenon is known known as mutarotation. So basically mutarotation is the process by which our degree measure for our rotation of plain polarized light changes to until a certain degree measure is reached. But the question is, why exactly does this take place? What causes this reaction, this phenomenon, to actually occur? Now, remember, whenever we take any cyclic carbohydrate molecule, any sugar molecule in its cyclic form, it will begin to equilibrate with its straight chain open straight chain form so if we take for example our alpha anomer and place it into our aqueous mixture that alpha anomer will unravel it will basically break open and form the open straight chain molecule and that straight chain molecule can then once again close however when it closes now because a rotation of a bond is possible as we'll see in just a moment, not only will the alpha anomer form the thing that we began with, but the beta anomer can also form. So let's take a look at our reaction that basically describes what is taking place. Let's suppose we take our aqueous mixture in which we have water as well as a bit of hydronium ion. So we take our alpha anomer of D-glucopyranose, our alpha D-glucopyranose as shown, and we place it inside our aqueous mixture. Because we are in the presence of the hydronium acid, in the first step we have the protonation of this oxygen taking place. If this oxygen is protonated, we form this protonated version of alpha D-glucopyranose. Pyranose. So because this oxygen is protonated, this bond will become weak and it can basically break off. And these two electrons on the bond can be pulled on to this electronegative oxygen. And we form this open straight chain molecule.
molecule, our sugar molecule, in which we no longer have a cyclic structure, but we have this straight chain structure that contains an open carbocation intermediate. So we have this positive charge on the carbon, but if, they, if the two electrons from this oxygen form a pi bond here, our charge can be delocalized onto this oxygen. So we have a resonance stabilized intermediate. So in the next step, we can either do one of two things. We can either go back and close our chain and then reform our alpha D glucopyranose, or we can have a rotation take place first. So if this bond between this carbon and this carbon rotates, then our molecule, our OH, will basically end up on top, while the H will end up pointing to the bottom. Bottom. And so now we can have our resin stabilized structure as shown here, where we have a positive charge that is delocalized among this oxygen and this carbon here. And now we can have a closure taking place in which we basically follow these reverse steps. Our bond here. So these two electrons on this oxygen can basically reform a bond with this carbon here. So in this step, we can have these two electrons reform a bond with this carbon to form this molecule that basically looks like this, mo uh, this molecule, except in this case, the OH points down, but in this case, the OH points up. And in a final step, if a water molecule deprotonates this oxygen, we form our beta D glucopyranose. We form our molecule where the hydroxide group now points up to the same side as the primary. And notice in this case, this was the alpha because our hydroxide pointed downward. So we see that as soon as we take our alpha anomer of glucose and place it into the aque aqueous mixture, we have a reaction taking place in which our cyclic molecule forms the open straight chain hydrocarbon which or carbohydrate which then basically can either go back and reform the alpha anomer or it can rotate because we have the open carbocation intermediate and if it rotates and then closes we basically form the beta anomer so eventually after we wait some given amount of time we have an equilibrium taking place between our alpha anomer and the beta anomer of d glucopyranose and at this point, once equilibrium has been achieved, our plane polarized light will no longer rotate this quantity or this quantity. It will rotate a certain quantity in between. For the case of our glucopyranose, this is positive 52.7 uh, degrees. So this quantity of degrees in the clockwise positive direction. So if we only had the alpha anomer, the rotation would be 112. If we only had the beta anomer, the rotation would be 18.7. But because we have a mixture of both, we have an equilibrium reaction taking place. That means the mixture will rotate the plane polarized light a certain other quantity of degrees and specifically for the glucopyranose it's 52.7 for other sugar molecules this value will be different and this reaction is known as the mu or this reaction causes a phenomenon known as muta rotation basically the gradual change of rotation for our plane polarized light until we reach that certain quantity in this case once again 57 uh, 52.7 degrees in the clockwise positive direction.